Hello and welcome back to the Toronto Website Developer.com. I am Peter Yorski, the Toronto Website Developer specializing in Drupal. And in this eighth video tutorial, the 10 part video tutorial series on views, we're going to continue off from the seventh video tutorial, continuing to look at the views API. So previously we looked at integrating a custom module, uh, although we didn't actually have the code in our module. Uh, theoretically, the module that we looked at in video seven created some data in the database and then we integrated that with views. We did that by adding fields, sorts, filters, relationships and arguments, and then we went ahead and created another view after we had done the integration. Now, while we were doing that, we were actually looking at some handlers and we were using handlers to control the, you know, the node APIs and the reference node API, or the reference node uh, NIDs, sorry, not APIs. Um, and one of the things that we looked at was, you know, views uh, handler fields uh, from the node module. And I actually misspoke during that module, that video tutorial, and I said that it was the node module that provided those handlers, but in reality, it's actually the views module. And so if you go into the views module, you go into modules, you'll see that there are a number of uh, modules that are listed here. And what these are, are the actual integrations with specific core modules. And so views provides uh, node integration. And you'll see here we've got views handler field node. And that's what we were using. So the first part of this video tutorial is going to be kind of a more conceptual look at these handlers. And then the second part of the video tutorial series will be a very high level example on how to actually implement your own handler. But before we can do the example, we should look at what handlers actually are. So in order to do so, you're going to need a little bit, uh, a little bit of familiarity with PHP and object-oriented programming because the handlers themselves are all objects, uh, or rather classes. And so views is somewhat object-oriented um, in that it provides a bunch of classes that you can then inherit and extend. Uh, and it, it, that's what the handlers themselves specifically are. So if we open up views handler field node, which is what we were looking, what we were using, and we'll take a look at it. First off the bat, you'll notice that we've got a class here and we define a new class, but it also extends view handler field. And so what that allows this views handler field node to do is pull in all the existing variables and functions from views handler, use those and override them where necessary. And so you'll see a number of instances where they do that. Uh, you know, we've got the init function uh, to initialize. Then we've got, you know, the option definition. The options form is uh, very interesting. One of the things that we'll be overriding ourselves. So I wanted to draw your attention to that. And then also they've got this render link and render. And so render is actually provided from the views uh, field handler class that we're extending. Uh, and then it calls render link, which is a custom function, which actually returns the link for this specific functionality, you know, to render a link to the NID. So um, in doing all of this, what you can see is kind of the power of object oriented programming uh, and get an idea for how views works. So by going object oriented, you don't have to read all of this code in your integrations. You can simply extend and override where necessary. And so again, if you're not familiar with object oriented programming, you might want to pause the video tutorial here and just go, you know, read a Wikipedia article, get an idea of what I'm talking about, and then maybe join us back. So because we're extending views handler field, let's take a look at what that actually provides. So in order to do that, we've got to step back into views and we'll go into the includes, sorry, not the includes, the handlers, and we'll look for views handler field and we'll put that, uh, we'll open that up in our, in our text editor. And so if we scroll down just briefly, you'll see here we've got class views handler field and it's also extending views handler, which is an even higher level class. But if we look for options form in here, we can see that there's a function and this actually provides the form that users see, that kind of in-depth form, when you're adding a field to views. And so why don't we actually take a look at that so you have an idea of what I'm talking about. So um, I'll just step into the dog image view. Actually, we'll go to the dog node review uh, because that's what we were using in video tutorial seven. And so if I click on this title, we get this whole form here. We've got create a label, exclude from display, style settings, number results, behavior. And if we look at this actual form, um, out of views handler field, that's what it's actually creating. And so you're able to take that and then add to it. And that's what views handler field node is doing. Um, it's taking the actual parent form. You'll see it's getting rendered down here, but it's adding link to node to it. So it takes the form that it inherits, uh, or sorry, that it uh, gets passed by reference, adds link to node, and then it calls the actual parent 
which would be from views handler field to actually render that full form. Uh, so it adds itself to it. And that's kind of one of the cool things about being able to add your own handler and being object oriented is that you don't have to rewrite everything. You can just do a little bit of markup uh, or sorry, a little bit of coding and then um, add that back into the existing um, handler. So um, that's kind of a look at the handlers. If you if you kind of walk through view handler field, you'll see that there are you know a ton of functions um, and ways to kind of override or tie into the existing code. Um, for our sake, we're just going to look at the form and then actually rendering. Uh, this is just meant to be an introductory for the, uh, into this kind of concept into this field, and you can take it further. And I'd love to hear about how you're doing that in the comments section, or if you have any questions up till now, kind of uh, what we've been talking about, feel free to post those. But I'm going to close this views handler field ink. Uh, I'm going to leave the views handler field node open because we're going to use that ourselves. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll actually add our own handler right now. So if you remember, we had TWD views that views ink, and we had added all of our specific fields to it. I've actually gone ahead into the database and I've added another. Sorry, I'm just going to scroll down. TWD dog reviews. I've added another field for a description, and so this description just has you know comments that people provide. Uh, theoretically when they're looking at the dog reviews, right? So it wouldn't necessarily be set up this way, but um, just for the sake of this tutorial, I've gone ahead and created that. So I have to get this description field into our view. So let's go ahead and do that. You remember this would be like a refresher from uh, video tutorial seven. So I'll just copy the previous field that we had, paste that, and just update this. So it's no longer going to be in our UID. It's going to be description, right? And so this would be vote description. description of the vote provided by the user. And so we're just going to do a field, right? We never use this as an argument relationship or anything like that. And we'll leave our, our handler just as the default handler. And we'll just make sure that we can get that into views and everything is working properly. So we'll go ahead and save that. We'll back into our reviews. We'll cancel this. And we'll have to flush our caches. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so with our cache is flush, we should be able to go ahead and add and go to TWD dogs, and we should be able to pull in the description. We'll go ahead and apply that. And we don't want to use a relationship because it's actually coming out of our table. So we can go ahead and obviously no queries run because we had an argument for the NID. Let's just remove that argument. We scroll down, we're actually getting into the descriptions now. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so with that working, what we're going to do is open up our code. And first thing we're going to do is we have views handler field. We're going to add our own. So it's going to be TWD dog reviews. Actually, TWD reviews, I'm sorry. Views. So that's what our module is called. Uh, and we're going to call it just blank. I'm going to copy this because we're going to need it. So first thing we'll do is go into our info file because this is usually the place where I get tripped up. And we're going to add this because we have to add a new key, a new file. So includes ink. All uh, handlers need their own files, so that's why when we're looking in the um, the file directory for Node, they've got all these different inks uh, for handlers. That's because each requires its own. So we've got to step back into modules, go into our TWD views, our custom module, into includes, and we're going to add our own uh, file there. So you'll see I've already gone ahead and done it. So views handler field TWD views blank ink. And that file name has to match the name of our handler. And so that does. We can go ahead and save our ink file, save our info file. We can take the code out of the field note ink because we're going to use that. So we'll go ahead and close that. And I'm going to open up this field or this file. So let's grab this. And so it's just blank, so I'm going to paste in the code, right? And so first thing we're going to want to do is we've got this view handler field node. That should actually be views handler field TWD views blank. Has to match the name of our file, so make sure you do that. And we're obviously going to extend views handler field. So we'll go ahead and save that. Now we'll step back to our view, and we've got to clear our caches because we've done all this and everything's cached with views, so we'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so with that done, we can actually scroll down. We'll see if we broke anything. And it 
doesn't look like we did, so that's great. We still got our things going on. And you'll probably notice that, you know, when we pasted this all in, we still use the exact same code that was in Node Edit. So uh, that's okay. If we actually go and we look at quote description here, you'll see that we actually get the options that are provided by uh, that handler for Node Field. Um, we obviously don't want those, so we can just cancel, but you'll notice that it doesn't actually break anything, right? That's because we have our specific namespace, so that's okay. We'll just handle things a certain way. Uh, and by default, everything's turned off anyways. So we can get rid of the init function. We're not going to override that, uh, nor do we have to override the option definition. We are going to override the options form because we want people to check on or off whether or not they want to replace with blank. And then this is a custom function, render link from uh, uh, you know uh, the handler field for node. But uh, we are going to override this, this function uh, render uh, that comes in from views handler field. So we've got those. Let's look through our options form here first. So what this is going to be is TWD uh, views blank. It's going to be part of our form. And so we'll actually just say here, um, just render the word blank, right? And so we'll just say enable this checkbox to replace the output with blank, right? Um, and then obviously we want the default to be blank, but we don't want it to be overridden if someone's already chosen something. So we'll just change that to options, right? And so here in our render function, what we need to do is look at the actual value and determine from the options what we're going to do with that. So um, first thing let's do, we'll just go ahead and we'll go DSM values. Right? And DSM is a function of the Devel module, so I've got that installed. I think I used it in a previous video tutorial, so if you're not sure too much about that, um, definitely get the Devel module. You can get it at drupal.org slash project slash Devel. And so uh, for now, what we'll do is we'll actually just uh, return values, I guess. We'll see if that actually works. Actually. What we should do is look at the original. So we'll go to views, and it's a handler. So we'll look at our field, and we'll just go to render function render. Okay, and we'll just actually take this as our default. Was put in our DSM. So let's DSM values. Save that. Reload this page. Okay, so with our DSM, you'll see that we're going to get some printouts here uh, for the values for each one of our um, renderable outputs. Um, and just looking through here, what we're looking for was whether or not our checkbox was checked off. Uh, but you'll see here, there's no, when we start looking through this, there's no way to really tell. So obviously the value is not going to help us. So what we need to look at is actually uh, the instance of this. So if we, D, if we DSM this, it actually refers to the object, uh, so the object that we've created. Uh, and it should have an indication of um, what's in the options form. So let's go ahead and save this and just do a little bit of foreshadowing. I know that this is still going to be problematic, uh, but I didn't know I was going to get an error. So line 33, I didn't put my semicolon. So the error was a surprise, but we're still not going to have what we need. And I'll walk you through why that is. So we're going to get this long up, but that's okay. Let's just reload the page again. When we reload the page again, we'll get the actual DSM that we're looking for. Um, so here we're going to get from views handler field TWD views blank. And so if we look through this, you'll see the actual options here. And in this uh, array, we should see, there we go, TWD views blank. And we see that it's currently at zero. So let's go ahead and change that to a one. So in vote description, we're going to, and we're getting these because it's still called again every time. We're going to go to just render the word blank. We'll go to apply. We get this long string, so let's go ahead and just reload our page. And if we look at TWV blank, look at options, we still see it's at zero. So that's a little bit odd, right? We should have it properly. And if we go back into TWD vote description, 
we scroll down, it's not saving our checkbox. And the reason for that is we actually need the option definition, which I earlier lied to you and said that we didn't need. Uh, so if you remember, if we're looking at uh, the views handler field node, they went ahead and they included saw, uh, the function for options form, uh, or rather option definition, and they included that. So I'm just going to paste this code in, and then I'll kind of walk you through it. So what we need to do is we actually need to override that uh, function as well. So I'm just going to clean this up a bit. Right? And so you'll see here, we're, we're calling the parent definitions, right? That's, it shouldn't be too much of a surprise. And then we've got this option here for TWD views blank. That's, that's R specifically, right? That's the same that we're using down here, TWD views blank. And it's equal to an array. And we're setting the default, and default is going to be if, uh, if we have something set, we're going to use whatever it is that's set. Otherwise, it's going to be set to false, right? So it's, it's off the bat, if we haven't checked anything, it's going to be set to false. So we can go ahead and we can save that. And that actually comes out of views field, uh, views handler fields here. And you'll see that there's the function option definition. Uh, and here's the, the look at kind of what um, others are using. And so you can kind of take this and, and use it, customize it for your own needs. Um, but obviously we pulled that all in just by using this, this one for options, right? So if we go ahead and save that, we're going to have to clear our caches because we added a new function. So let's go ahead and flush our caches. And we're going to get this uh, this message. We can forget that. So now let's scroll down. We'll go to vote description. We'll scroll. We'll check off. We'll hit apply. All right now, I think we'll need to reload the page to see it. Yeah. So let's go reload. We're going to get our message again. And if we look now, we should go to options. We see that it's actually saving. So we're seeing it saved off as a one. So that's great. But if we scroll down, we actually haven't done anything. Oh, the reason why we're not getting our uh, our output is because of the uh, the message that we're getting each time that we do that. So let's get rid of our DSMs here. We can save that, and then when we reload this page, you'll notice that our output isn't actually being changed. We've checked off the box. We said we only want the blank, but we still have the same thing. So what we need to do is add an if statement down here. So the value is going to be, we can leave that, and we'll add an if statement. So if, remember we're looking at this, and we were looking at options, right? We still have the, uh, the most recent up here, so we can always check back. So if options, and then options in an array, so TWD blank. So if options, TWD blank, TWD views blank, I'm sorry, I knew I was missing a word. Views blank. Is equal to one, then return blank. Save that. And then we'll go else. And we'll re render as normal, uh, just like the, the regular class, uh, if it's not checked off. So we'll go ahead and we'll save this. Uh, just make sure that we have all of our, yeah, we're good. So we go ahead and save that. And we didn't actually change any functions or anything, so we should just be able to reload. And we've got a problem on line 46. What do we do on line 46? Yes, we obviously have a line problem on 46. That should be indented. That should be there. Match up with our function, save that, reload that. Let's roll down, and we're getting the word blank which is awesome. That means our handler is working. If we go back up, just to confirm, view description, take off blank, hit apply, scroll back down, we actually get the actual message. So that's it, that's a custom views handler. Uh, I know that this example wasn't the best and that would probably never be one that you actually use, but it does give you an idea of how to actually create your own, extend the default views handler, create an option, you know, check whether that option checked off or not, and then change the rendering output of whatever it is you're, you're doing for your fields. Uh, so that's it. If this video tutorial helped you, please leave a comment and let me know. Always appreciate the thumbs up. Uh, and if there's anything you'd like to see in the last two video tutorials, please let me know. I have received one comment about a specific module to be included. We'll be looking at views, plugin modules, that kind of thing. Uh, so again, if you want to see anything, let me know. Time's running out. Uh, hopefully we'll see you in the next video tutorial. Take care.